Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about creating a power function in Java. A power function will basically allow us to take a number and raise it to the power of another number. So there's actually already a method in Java that lets us do this. It's the math.pow method. And in here, we can pass two numbers. So I can pass a base number, and then I can pass in the power number. And this is basically just going to give us like three raised to the second power. So we'll end up getting nine. Um, and this is a, a pretty cool little method. And I want to show you guys how we can build a method just like this inside of our Java programs. So what's unique about this method is it'll allow us to use uh, something like a for loop in order to loop through and multiply these numbers. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to make another method. I'm just going to say public static void. Actually, we want to return an integer. So I'm going to say public static int and I'm just going to call this POW. And inside of this POW method, we are going to pass two parameters. So we're going to accept two parameters, two integers. They're going to be called base num and they're going to be called pow num. So we'll basically take the base num and raise it to the pow num. So if base num is two and pow num is three, we'll do two cubed, right? Kind of makes sense. All right, so inside of here, the first thing we want to do is create a variable that's going to store the result of raising base num to power num. So I'm just going to say int, we'll call this result. And initially, I'm just going to set this equal to one. And what I can do now is I can basically go through a loop and I can continually multiply result by base num. So let's see how we can do this. I'm going to create a for loop. So I'm going to say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than pow num. So in other words, I want to keep going through this loop as long as i is less than the power number. And then I'm just going to say i plus plus. And so now we can go inside of this for loop and every single time we go through this loop, right? Well, actually, let's think about this for a second. Just off of this condition up here, this whole thing that we're saying, we're going to go through this loop pow num times. So if pow num is two, we're going to go through this loop two times. If pow num is five, we're going to go through this loop five times, right? And that's because I set i equal to zero and we're going to loop as long as i is less than pow num. And every iteration of the loop, we're adding one to i. So essentially what this is saying is we are going to go through this loop pow num times. So every time I go through the loop, I just want to multiply result by base num. So I can just say result is equal to result times base num. So in the first iteration through this loop, the first time we go through it, result is set to one. And so now result is going to be equal to result times base num. So results actually going to be equal to base num at the first time we go through the loop, right? The second time we go through the loop, result now has the same value as base num. So when we multiply these two together, we're essentially getting base num squared. The third time through the loop, result has the value of base num squared. So when we multiply result times base num, we're basically getting base num cubed and on and on and on. So this is going to allow us to essentially take any number to another power. And there's one more thing we have to do, which is just return result. So now we're just going to return whatever the result was. And I think we should probably try to test this out. So instead of printing out math.pow, why don't we just print out the method we just made, which is just pow. So we're no longer accessing that math class. So let's see if this works. So hopefully we should get a nine back. And you can see we get our nine back just like that. So let's try another one. Let's try four cubed. So four raised to the third power and we should get 64 back and we do. Okay, so this seems to be working. So let me walk you guys through it one more time real quick. We're taking two integers into this method, right? We're taking the base num, we're taking the power num. Awesome. We create a variable called result and we set it equal to one. Then we create a loop and we're going to iterate through the code inside of this loop pow num times. So if pow num is equal to five, we're looping through this guy five times. If pow num is 10, we're looping through this 10 times, right? 
every time through the loop, we set result equal to result times base num. So basically what that does is it continually raises that number to the next power. You'll notice that I never modify base num. I never modify it. I'm only ever modifying this result variable. And the result variable is what we're going to end up returning because after we've gone through this loop pow num of times, that's going to be equal to the correct answer. So that is our pow function. If this doesn't fully make sense, your homework is to play around with it. Play around with these different numbers and try to figure out exactly why it's doing what it's doing. And then create another method of your own that uses a for loop. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.